escape mm, I go with the flow Long as the flow Is taking me where I need to go I go with the flow Long as the flow Is taking me Where I need to go Independence is my creed In spite of everything I gotta be free So I go with the flow As long as the flow Is taking me Where I need to go mm, I don't mean any harm Hope you understand Life's too short for a rambling man The narrow road Is where it's at I break away Don't look back Maybe I'll see you another time But until then I'm out of sight mm, But if you find yourself in need Call my cell phone You can count on me I'll be around Wait and see I'll exercise Flexibility Get there just as quick as I can When I go with the flow I got no plan I Don't be flustered Or disgusted Or mad Or sad Flustered Or disgusted Or mad Or sad Be happy Be glad be with you. Jesus Christ. Hey Tim, before you leave, Jane has something for you. <laughs> okay. Am I leaving? No, you can't. <laughs> Tim's birthday's coming up this this week, so I think we need to sing him happy birthday. Are you ready? Uh -oh. oh yeah. One Two, three. <laughs> Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tim. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I'm getting better, not older. You're getting better, not older. Yeah, Okay, all right. <laughs> That's good. Well, you know, as you were singing, Tim, one of the things that came across my mind was that that kind of place of peace that we all go when we have that quiet moment. And you know, where does our where does our mind go? You know, where 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 do we picture ourselves when we have that? moment of rest, that moment of peace. And so, you know, for some of us, it's two wheels, of course. Uh, maybe it's uh, down near Moab. You know, maybe it's uh, running the Mojave. Uh, maybe it's uh, South Dakota. Uh, for some of us, uh, we might be hunters, like my son-in-law. And so that might be on the lake. It might be, you know, the spray of the boat going across the lake at sunrise, or I've sat in the duck blind with him and the, watching the sun come up, you know, and uh, just the, the quiet of that moment when uh, the 
earth comes alive with the sun. And, you know, those are, are moments of, of solitude, moments of peace. And sometimes in those moments, we reflect on our faith. And, you know, uh, I was starting to think a little bit about faith this week. And, and so I looked looked up a couple of definitions of faith. And it says, faith, a confident belief in the truth, value, or trustworthiness of a person or an idea or a thing. Often faith in Christianity, the theological virtue defined by a secure belief in God and a trusting acceptance of God's will or a set of principles or beliefs. It's a definition of faith. In Psalm 25, we, we see this, we read this. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me put, be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. But shame will come on those who are treacherous and without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. My hope is in you all the day long. Remember, Lord your great mercy and love for they are from of old those are comforting words in psalm trust trust in god hope in god teach me your paths guide me in your truth, truth of God, the mercy of God. It's comforting thoughts. We can pretty much agree on the difference between a truth and a lie. We can pretty much agree on that. Truth is conformity to a fact or actuality. A statement proving, proven to be acceptable as true. Reality. Truth is reality and actuality. Often, truth is that which is to be considered to be the supreme reality and to have the ultimate meaning of value of existence. Truth. It's pretty universally accepted. Truth is reality. A lie, on the other hand, is a false statement deliberately presented as being true, a falsehood, something meant to deceive or to give a wrong impression. So the truth and a lie, we can pretty much determine that. In Psalms, we're encouraged to look at the truth and the trust of God. Those are pretty straightforward principles. But something that's a little more difficult is the difference between right and wrong. Right, conforming, conforming with or conformable to justice, law, or morality. Right in accordance with fact or reason or truth, correct. Wrong, not conformity with the fact or truth, incorrect or erroneous. Contrary to conscience, morality, law, being immoral or wicked or unfair or unjust, not fitting or suitable, not functioning properly, wrong. 
something we're pretty familiar with on these motorcycles sometimes they don't function properly that's wrong <laughs> they need they need to run correctly that would be right <laughs> it's pretty you know that part's pretty straightforward but you know in this day and age you know there's many things are happening around us right in the news uh, with our government with our courts you know not to be political but clearly laws are changing views are changing of what's right what's wrong what's legal what's not legal what's moral what's immoral um, those things are that's a that's a moving it's a moving standard those are those are evolving that's evolving so it's hard to know you know what is right and what is wrong you know that's changing regardless of your political bent we can agree that the view of the courts are changing, therefore the law is changing, therefore if it says that it's conformable with justice, the sense of justice is an evolving thing and it's changing, so what's right and what's wrong is sometimes difficult. We know the difference between a truth and a lie, but that can somehow be confusing. This week I ran into a fella and uh, we started talking and, you know, I think many of us strike up conversations. We're, we're bikers, you know, we're hunters, we're social people. We go out with our friends and do things, you know, we strike up conversations. And so I was talking to this fella and as I many times do, I'll say something like, well, uh, if it's a guy, I'll say, are you a, are you a church guy? <laughs> <laughs> or or do, you, do you have faith, or what, where are you at with that? You know, just asking in a non confident just where are you at, you know? And I'll ask that question a lot. And a lot of times I'll get answers like, well, no, I'm not really a church person, but I have faith. You know, I get that a lot, you know? And um, this, this fellow was kind of in that boat, and he was disillusioned by immoral and illegal acts created by or committed by the leaders of his church and he was disillusioned with that he had a hard time connecting the dots there you know because that was disillusioning that the leaders would commit you know clear wrongs immoral by any standard uh, illegal you know acts and he was disillusioned by that, but he had faith, and so he was, you know, uh, seeking God outside of the church environment. And you know, no church, no no human institution of church, no building is immune from that kind of thing. No particular denomination is immune from that kind of thing. You know that that happens in our world, and sometimes that's hard to understand. And, that has some repercussions. Clearly, it has repercussions. Not making any excuses for anyone, but it happens, and it's it's not right. And in this case, it affected him deeply. So I listened to him talk a little, and I tried to encourage him. Um, We certainly agree that you can see God outside of church. We're certainly doing that this morning. This is this is our church. It's not not a traditional church, you know. But uh, of course, the concern is that if if, uh, if you don't purpose to study God's word, if you don't purpose to worship Him, it's sometimes easy to begin to build distance between yourself and the Creator. Just because things get in the way, life gets busy, and so some structure sometimes helps that. But we don't have to be in a church building to worship. There's no question about it. John 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. This is Christ speaking. My father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going, therefore, to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? You know, Thomas was worried that Jesus was going to be leaving, and he didn't, didn't want to be separated. He said, I'm confused. You're going? You're going to prepare a place? I don't know where you're exactly going. You know, I need a little more clarity there. I'm concerned you're not going to be with me. You're my teacher. You're my mentor. Thomas was worried. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's a rather definitive statement. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well from now on. You do know him and have seen him. Because Christ was fully Christ and fully God. And so to know him was to know God. Philip said, show us the Father. And that will be enough for us. Don't leave us. <laughs> don't leave us. We don't want you to leave us. We want you to be here. We enjoy the fellowship with you. You're our mentor. You're our teacher. Don't leave us. Philip was also concerned. Jesus answered, don't, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you for such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Christ was fully... Christ and fully God. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but rather it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me or at least believe the evidence of the works themselves, the miracles that he created. I believe in miracles. I believe miracles happen today. I believe miracles happen then. I believe Christ did literal miracles. I believe in miracles. Some of us have seen miracles, you know, um, and I, I don't, I'm not taking away from anything. We had, I just, you know, we were talking, to, talking about Greg earlier, you know, had a terrible accident last week. That could have, that was bad. That could have been the end of Greg. It's a miracle he's alive. He fell in front of a truck. You know, it's 70 miles an hour. It's a miracle he's still here. I mean, I believe that. I believe God spared his life. You know, those are, those are dangerous circumstances. Jesus also promises the Holy Spirit. If you love me, keep my commandments. There's the law. There's the law. There's justice. There's a standard that doesn't change. It's in the Word. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. Definition of truth. The Word of Christ. God, that's truth. The world can't accept him because they never, neither see him nor know him. But you know him, for he lives within you and will be with you. I will not leave you as orphans. I won't leave you alone. I will come to you before long. The world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. What a great picture of fellowship. What a great picture of relationship. That's a pattern for relationship. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. That really spoke to me this morning. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one 
who loves me. Do you love Christ? The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Christ is always there. He's right there close to us. He loves us. And how do we demonstrate our love for him? He's told us, if you want to demonstrate that love, whoever has my commands and keeps them. Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. He left us his word to follow. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father, Holy Father, my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. You know, what that doesn't say is that's not a demand for perfection. That doesn't say whoever loves me will be perfect. Or whoever loves me won't stumble or won't say the wrong thing or won't commit an act of, you know, um, hostility or won't say a bad word, get mad, throw something down, chase down a car that tried to kill you, <laughs> you know. <laughs> that happens, right? He didn't say that. He didn't say you have. He doesn't demand our perfection to love us. He says, I've given you the truth. I've given you a standard. That standard doesn't change. That standard doesn't change. I've left it for you. Read my standard. Follow my standard. simple way to show our love, our individual love for Christ. The further away from God and Christ one gets, the love uh, relationship becomes more difficult to maintain. Christ is always there. We continue to pull away from Him. It's just more difficult to maintain that relationship. If we talk to Him, daily. We read his word some somewhat regular basis. We're choosing to be closer to him. That makes that relationship easier to maintain. So it's a question for the depths of your heart, <laughs> the depths of our hearts individually and collectively. Do you love Christ? Do you seek to obey his teaching? Do you seek to keep his teachings? Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by the Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. So as we think about faith, we think about truth, and as we try to examine what's right and what's wrong, we know that those right and wrong standards are changing according to the world, according to governments, right? According to legislation, that's a, that's a little bit of a moving target. But truth and deception are pretty clear. And Christ says that his teachings are true and are trustworthy. And he loves us individually and collectively. And we have a very simple way, individually, to show our love for him. You would, if you want to talk more about a personal relationship with Christ, Jeff or myself or Tim, we'd be glad to talk about that. But that's the truth of God's words today. So... Um, That be said, a uh, quick prayer. Um, does anyone have anything special that they need to remember today?
I don't want to. Spoken or unspoken no. makes no difference. Cindy's boards. Cindy's boards. Okay. Spoken or unspoken? Raise a hand. Unspoken. Okay. All right. I'm sure we can help T out with her healing. Yeah. Tracy. Teresa. Tracy. Tracy. She had knee surgery. That's it. Tracy's knee surgery. Okay. okay. Good. 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 Okay. All right. Well, I'll uh, I'll lead us if we go before the Lord, dear Heavenly Father, Lord God. We just thank you so much that you have love and mercy and grace. Passes all understanding, Lord God. It goes beyond what we can understand. Lord, we thank you for your love for us, your unconditional love for us. Lord God, when we were unlovable, you loved us. Lord God, I just thank you so much that you accept us the way we are. Lord God, we have many things to be thankful for. And coming up on Veterans Day, Lord God, we're thankful for those that have served and protect us as in the military, those first responders that have put themselves in the way of difficult circumstances to protect and to benefit the greater good, Lord God. We thank you for those that have served. Lord God, we have friends that are hurting right now, have concerns physically. Think of Tracy and her recovery, Lord God. Physically, we think of Greg and his continued recovery, Lord God. We thank you for the miracle of his walking and talking with us yesterday. <laughs> think of Cindy and her boards. Lord God, in this quiet moment, each one of us is thinking about something that, a need that we have this week, today, in our life. We're thinking of a need of a family member, Lord God. We lift those up to you, those unspoken requests. We have a friend that needs a touch. We have a family member that needs a touch. Lord God, we just commit that to you. Thank you for the fellowship we experience here today, the meal we may have together a little bit. We thank you for the moment we have to just look to you, look to your word, look to your truth. We thank you for that, that you allow us to do that together. We just commit this morning to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. That's all. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs>